afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our presentation. We are protege. Uh, this is a, an idea of the, the badge that we would like to have as our, as our sort of head logo. Uh, as you can see, that badge incorporates what we're about. Uh, music, academics, and sports. Uh, we are an interactive online platform uh, bringing <coughs> students and mentors together. We then have our running logo at the moment, Protégé, uh, in that font, uh, with our slogan, slogan underneath, do your best and we'll do the rest. Um, I would like to introduce our team to you. On my far right, we have James Agiatis, who is going to be the head of graphic and media. On James's left, Justin Cooper, the head of academic tutors. Myself, Milo Hugworth, I will be the marketing manager. On my left, Jeff Rogerson, who's going to be the head of the sporting and cultural side of our business. Right, um, morning everyone. Just before we get to the problem that we have identified, um, this week has been an incredible opportunity for us to engage with our classmates as well as the biotech students and actually learn quite a lot from each other through critically analyzing each other's ideas and raising some of the fundamental problems we as South Africans face today. Um, something that I think is, is appropriate to touch on and to be blunt for a moment, we are a group of all white males. So that does not truly represent the demographic of our country and it may have implications and ramifications down the line. However, as a team, we plan to, to branch out and, and develop a team that is fully representative and incorporates people from different socio-economic backgrounds, cultural backgrounds, and bring that together to ultimately give the future, which are the children that we are, are targeting this, this whole platform at, the best chance of success. Right, so the problem that we've identified, many students have at one point or other needed extra help with work that they are studying. This often comes in the form of tutoring and coaching. However, it is often difficult and cumbersome to find a worthwhile and effective tutor or coach to help with your studies. Apart from geographical location, one cannot always be sure how effective the tutors, coaches, teaching methods are and considering one is paying for the session, it would be advisable to get the best possible tutor coach. So let's just bear that in mind. I know that everybody in this room has, has in some form played sports, been involved in the classroom in, form of, in the form of academics in some way or culturally. So we've identified some competitions in this regard. First, Tutor South Africa is a web-based platform. Quite similar to ours, however, we found that they were, they were, I don't know, they had a, almost an online discussion happening on their web page and there were ethical things that came up, um, so quite tacky. Gramstein Tutors is a Facebook page, uh, however, we noticed on the page that they've had limited traffic over the last six months and there were also some not so nice comments posted on there with yeah, also ethical reasons, which is a huge thing with a platform like this. Teach Me Too, which Zach from Social Next turned us on to, is a brilliant online platform based out of Cape Town. It's been operating since 2006. And we actually learned a hell of a lot going through their website, watching their videos, seeing how they've developed through time. Um, then Varsity Tutors, which is something we haven't heard a lot about, but it seems to be quite prominent based on, on their website and app that they have. Um, so it's something that we think we could work on, and with the right marketing and advertising, could, we could really improve. All of these ideas, don't sort of incorporate um, the, the music, or the cultural side, academics and sport. It's either just academic or academic and cultural. So we really think that our competitive edge will come out of our sport. Um, yeah, and just like the slide says, it would be naive, naive of us to believe that we wouldn't encounter this competition. So we're going to learn from them and, and make the relevant changes. It's our passion. Protégé is an app that links students with tutors. We provide a platform for people to connect and improve. Because when it comes to knowledge, everyone has the right to learn. <coughs> yeah, we have this, this business model canvas that Chart is explaining to all of you. Um, those of us who have been around this week will be quite, quite aware of this and, and we've implemented it all in our, in our relative businesses. For those of you who don't know, that's the basic structure. For the purposes of this slide, we're going to be focusing on our value proposition. So we focused on something that's new and easy to access. Connecting students to the talented individuals who can help them grow. Growth of skills, comparative and easy pricing structure, uh, personalized experience, 
extensive research, talent identification, and fast tracking this talent. So, how do we aim to solve this problem? We aim to develop an app um, where people can advertise their services in a certain field of tutoring or coaching. People that are looking for tutoring can then search for the field or knowledge that they need help in and view the hourly rates and rating of each available tutor. The people will pay the tutor or coach an agreed upon rate before the session is booked and the app or website will retain a small percentage of the tutoring fee as a service fee. So what we've decided to do is to try and incorporate something similar to Uber, where it's an interactive process where a, a tutling or um, a budding sportsman can book a time slot with a tutor or a coach and that will then populate a calendar on the app. So that is almost your binding agreement. There's been, a, there's been an interaction and that's our way of tracking what's happening with people being tutored or coached and the people doing the tutoring or coaching. Um, we would have a centralized account where all the money would be paid into to avoid moonlighting and people <coughs> teaching and coaching on the side and we would then distribute the funds accordingly, much like you pay your school fees and teachers receive their salaries out of that. Um, and I think this, it's quite an important process monitoring that to ensure that it all runs effectively and, and as ethically as possible. So basically how the app will work is that we are going to advertise for potential tutors, um, mainly around the university, seeing as they will best be able to help others. Um, we will then send them through a screening process, which we'll discuss just now, and we will create profiles on our website for coaches and tutors. The profiles will have very basic information, such as their first name and their rates of per hour. Uh, they will then have their um, uh, certificates of academics such as universities, um, sporting qualifications and whatnot. Um, we don't have any contact information on that so that the, um, the tutors and the customers won't be able to contact them directly. Um, we will also have a contract with our tutors that sign up um, to make sure that they don't, that they will only be allowed to see the clients that we see through, that sign up through the website and if they would like to see outside clients, that's not a problem, but any clients that they receive through the website, they have to remain interacting with them through the website. Um, all payments, like we say, will be handled through the website and we take a small fee. Um, tutors set their own rates and we will take a percentage of whatever rate they take. We have seven critical assumptions that we've made in terms of our businesses. Um, one is that the customers need the product, we've identified that. Um, a willingness to pay, which our students and customers say that they would. Um, how much depends on what they are getting tutored for. For example, sporting might be different to academic. Um, the human capital is available. We've got plenty of university students and plenty of um, younger undergraduate students that need help. Um, the control risks, such as money, safety, um, will be dealt with through the screening process, making sure that all our tutors are up to standard. Um, and then the customers that have access to internet, um, university has Wi-Fi everywhere, and all the schools have Wi-Fi everywhere. Um, we're also <coughs> introducing a system where people can sign up um, on paper, such as public libraries, for those that can't get online. Uh, the methods of measure that we, we use to, to analyze critical assumptions are mainly surveys written and online, and questionnaires. Um, things like human capital, we would have to send out um, recruitment um, advertisements when students return properly so that we can get a good idea of exactly how many people would like to apply. Um, like I've discussed, money is sent over the website, so um, people, sorry, uh, money is sent over the website, so agreed upon rates then become set and you can't suddenly change your rate because it would have been sent through and paid already before your tutorial. Um, the screening process uh, will be thorough and make sure that we have standard student tutors like I say, and uh, customers that don't have access to internet, um, we will find out through a public survey. Right, um, yesterday um, I'm a student tutor at St. Andrews College, so that provides quite a nice platform to interact with some of the staff members there, be it um, sporting, academic or cultural. 
Um, so we put these critical assumptions to them in the form of, of the following questions, as James just outlined. Um, so I'm not going to repeat them, but the general consensus wa was that was that there is definitely a need for this service in Gramstown. Customers would be willing to, willing to pay for this service, and the amount that they would be prepared to pay would be dependent on the qualifications of the tutors or relevant coaches or mentors. There is no shortage of human capital as a result of the number of academic institutions in town. Um, risk that we would need to take into account would be payment structures, misrepresentation, tardiness, and unethical behaviour. Um, a screening process is of paramount importance. All parties consulted and insisted on this. The last question is a difficult one to answer. This is the one pertaining to access to internet, and we would need to conduct a quantitative study to formulate a statistics in this regard within our, our geographical location. Um, there's some references there. Uh, people that I spoke to yesterday, the marketing manager, uh, Craig Hatches, and the director of cricket, um, Carl Bradley. <coughs> so any further questions, you could contact them or contact them through us. Okay, so I think it's been pretty prominent um, throughout the presentation that um, the people that we select are crucial as because they'll be representing our business and there's quite a it could be quite an issue if they're not the correct individual. So the screening process that you would take uh, would be firstly the academic and sporting qualifications. Um, obviously this is crucial as the bloke is not or the tutor is not um, qualified, you obviously cannot provide a quality service. And I think the same in sports. Um, there's a lot of guys even in Gramson that aren't qualified to do their jobs. They're just a student that's coaching cricket that actually knows nothing about cricket. So if we can get a sort of um, credibility from them doing levels, um, level one coaching cricket, level two coaching cricket, I think that will put them in good stead. Next, obviously ID passport numbers to verify who they are, job history, what experience they have, um, character reference from a reputable source, um, see so, yeah, some references from their, their past, and the police clearance um, to make sure that they're not any sort of, um, they have no criminal record and then motivation for tutoring. Um, I think that's the most important of the, of the points because their heart needs to be in the right place when it comes to teaching because that is exactly where you get the most out of the child. So, uh, one question that Job raised to us was uh, what are we going to do in the next two weeks? How are we going to make this work? Because it has come up that often these, there will be amazing business ideas uh, with, with these students and people taking part in the course, but then as soon as the, the workshop ends, they don't continue uh, within the next two weeks, and then from there it's difficult to, to, to get the ball rolling. Thus, uh, within the next two weeks, uh, we have decided to create a Facebook page uh, just to, to kick things off, start getting our name out there, what, who we are and what we do. Uh, alongside this, we will be running a website. We will also as Jeff mentioned, conduct surveys um, to as many university students as possible when they return back from their vacation. Quantitative studies will take place in, uh, in Grahamstown uh, with regards to incident access and who, who, who has that sort of availability. Uh, we will also send in uh, proposals to potential schools that we want to approach and ask whether or not they would like to uh, be involved with our business and, and, and what, we, what we are doing. Uh, the last process we will then start start a recruitment process and recruiting tu uh, uh, valuable tutors and, and and coaches from within and around Grahamstown. Therefore, our goals our goals for the future uh, are obviously very important, and ultimately the end goal would be to to raise enough funds to start an app an application whereby uh, those with with decent access to the internet and download this application and, and it would be the easiest and most interactive forum for, for coaches and students. Um, we also aim to start an outreach initiative for those members of the community that are unable to pay for their own tutorials and coaching sessions. Um, for every 10 students uh, that use our tutoring business and our coaching website, we will fund one previously disadvantaged member of the community. Um, and this member of the community will be able to sign up for the tutoring and coaching program um, through a, a hard copy uh, written, written document, as James mentioned earlier. Um, and we will make these sign-up sheets available at, at as many public places and, uh, as possible, uh, making our accessibility very good. Yeah, then I think also what's crucial is what exactly we've learned out of the week. Um, I think one of the most important things that we learned was 
chart and Zach on the first day just threw a whole bunch of newspapers out on the floor and they said have a look and we generated 50, 60 ideas in 20 minutes of problems that are currently in Gramsci. So I think what I've learned is there's so many problems happening in town and everybody thinks you must go somewhere else to make money but, and everything like that and do your enterprises in Cape Town or Joburg but there's so much happening in town that we overlook. Um, I think that's very crucial. Um, and also an alternative way of thinking. Um, we always think we need to come up with a product instead of thinking why we actually want to do that product. Um, and I think, I think it comes back to if your heart's in the correct place and you're doing something that you love, you'll be successful at that. And the business model canvas, um, for our alpha project in our PDM group, we took about a month to create a comprehensive business plan and we did exactly what we did in a month in two days. So um, I think that is an incredible model. And then we have learned the fundamentals of a lean startup. And I think we can take that forward for our whole business career. And yeah, just thanks to Chad and Zach for everything. Yeah, good. Um, up on the screen, now we have a screenshot of our Facebook page that we created this morning. So that's generally what it looks like. Um, it's not that interactive yet. We don't have people liking it yet. We just started. Uh, we've also <coughs> in the process of designing a website. James has been doing that this morning. Um, so hopefully that will be up and running shortly. I uh, would now welcome, welcome any questions. Questions from my guests first, and we can ask you questions already. Don't be afraid to ask critical questions. I'm keen to hear what the other students ask of their peers first. Not copy what they're asking, yeah. Uh, we actually had a, a dry run before, and most of the student questions were posed and answered then. Uh, so now the floor is open for the guests, but the students may ask as well. Do you guys think we suitably answered the question that was posed this morning? Mm. Are you happy? Yeah. Yeah. I think we are happy. I thank you for that, that critical evaluation that helped us a lot. The question that was asked was tra about transformation and how, how we fit into that as for white males, for the guests. That, yeah. um, I'm not sure, it's not really a question, but it's just a um, point that could aid in the process. Especially with like the paying of um, your tutors from your app, we know that if you're using like banks and that type of stuff. But now with the move to technology, stuff like WeChat wallets, it would be an easier way of handling that situation instead of that it's just a quick transaction, no actual money, less bank charges on your guys. Well. Ultimately, what you want is a system like Uber, uh, just instant. Yeah. See. Two questions that I want to ask. Um, thank you for the presentation. The one you said the tutors will have their own rates. Yeah, that was a discussion that we've had this morning and throughout the week, sort of, um, was that that was a deal that the tutor could negotiate with the potential client. So they come to an agreement. Another idea is to have a, an hourly rate that is dependent on your qualification. If you have a PhD, you can charge as much. If you have a master's degree, this much, honors, undergrad, matric. That was where I was going to yeah. be. Is, is it going to be me as a, as a tutor giving me my rate, or is it you giving a standard rate for for being part of your group? There won't be a standardized rate. It will be scaled okay. according to quali qualification. Okay. You want to get as many people involved as possible. I mean, if you're a first year, it's not geography. You qualify to go like matric or grad at geography. So, but, and it just provides more accessibility, I think, because if you've got a PhD and you are tutoring a grade eight, you could be charging 250, 300 rand an hour, where that kid might just need about 100 rand an hour to the first year students who needs the extra money. Okay, and then you said your revenue stream, you'll be taking a percentage from? We'll take a percentage as a, as a management fee for the platform. Do you have a standard in terms of what percentage? 10 to 15 percent. And in that, how long do you hope to get that one child that's going to be part of the transformation process? Well, for every 10, there'll be one coming in as quickly as possible. That's why we need to make those application forms um, as readily, readily available as possible. As soon as we had our first 10, okay. there's one coming in. And it's also, I think, quite important for us to get involved in the community in terms of scouting talent on the sports field. Okay. Um, and then getting those kids involved. Was one question that, I, with, that Carl Bradfield raised yesterday, the director of cricket, was how do you distinguish yourself from an agent, a sporting agent? And that's not where we're going at all. 
we're not promising a child he's going to be the next professional footballer, cricketer, or rugby player. Ultimately, what we would try and do, and in our discussion yesterday, we discussed how some of the big private schools, even government schools, find this talent and bring them into a schooling system. So if we could find a child who's, who doesn't have the access to the facilities or, or education, and we can bring them into a school like St. Andrews, Kingswood, or Graham, and give them an education as well as, the, as, well as that, that fine-tuned coaching, I think we're standing there, that child in good stead. So that's the idea that we're sort of going towards. Okay. Can I take that further? Sorry, I'm Am I not? Right, it's fine. It's fine. You have plenty of time. Exploring that as an opportunity and also having all your your tutors doing for free to the township schools, the same services, whereas gets paid and then you've got a certain amount of time that you've got to spend doing for township because township schools, if you have a group you do more as compared to having one child. Just that an idea that you guys could think of. Thank you. I'm, not, I'm not making okay. Thank you. Shut up. <laughs> do the tutors go to the students or do the students go to the tutors? We meet in a neutral environment. We thought ethically that it'd be better to use the facilities that the schools have available or that a community centre has available. So that it's not the tutor coming into that child's personal space at home or, or that child going into an unfamiliar environment in a tutor's home. So they meet in a neutral space just to avoid as many problems as possible. Mm -hmm. And we saw some really unethical things posted on some of those pages about tuttlings waking up next to their tutor in the morning after an exam. <laughs> well done, it's horrific. And that's where the partnership with Rowan and St. Andrew's and other institutions come in. Yeah. Can, I, can I make another suggestion? That was a point that came yeah. up yesterday talking to head of marketing in St. Andrews, Craig Hatches. And he, he suggested something, it could be quite controversial, but it's something to look at, is tailoring two apps that come back to the same online platform, but one specifically for males, one for females. And you can make the female one glitzy and glamorous, and they could have ballet <laughs> tutors and all sorts. I don't know, it was just an idea. And then, I mean, if they're only comfortable, if they're only comfortable seeing, um, having a, a woman tutoring them, then they have that opportunity. The same, if a, if a boy responds better to male authority, then he could just have a male tutor. So there is that sort of aspect. It's something that we could put to the population of Grahamstown and see how they feel about it. But there's lots to think about at the moment. Yeah, yeah. That's also where the screening process would come in. You could have, we'd have a rating system of people to say, okay, I like this tutor, so and so, there's a comment for you. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, please clearance and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, by the way, uh, having a male due to a boy does not exclude potential yeah, yeah, ethical yeah, issues. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> but also, the, the opposite happens. Girls prefer to be treated by males and males prefer to be treated think, by males. I think that's where that, that mutual environment, meeting at the St. Andrews Library where there's more people around yeah. you, or at the Rhodes Library where there's more people around you, you sort of avoid a lot of those yeah. things that could happen. Yeah. Thank you very much.